Hey everyone, welcome to Made for Monday episode 5 and today we talk about a few things. We talk about how I customize a slider element within my Webflow project and also how I integrated a Mac calendar into another Webflow project. But before we do that, I created a sketch to show you uh, how I created a custom code so that I can manipulate where the navigation of my slider element goes. Let's check it out. So you'll see in our layout that there's going to be some text at the top here. There's going to be slider section here with the slides. And then we want to place the slider navigation right here. However, because we are using the Webflow slider element, uh, positioning it there will take a little bit of work. Uh, so what I've done is I have created the slider elements and just made them position relative. So it kind of stacked them below the slider uh, itself and put them right beneath it. And I'm going to use jQuery to place these two slider elements with their specific IDs into this section here. Pretty cool. Let's jump into the code and see how it works. Alrighty, so as you can see on my screen, I have the Lapa Ninja landing page design that I was going to implement into our web design. So let's check out what this website looks like. So as you can see, it has a hero with a background video playing, and then it has a slider here with logos, services section, and then it has a recent work section, and as you can see, that this section has a fixed nav that's on the left side that sticks. Then below that, we have some interaction right here in the meet our team section. Then we have a slider of testimonials. And then lastly, an estimate section and the footer section. And we also have a cookie that is our cookie uh, section that is fixed to the bottom of the website and until you click on I understand. And I was able to recreate all of that within a Webflow. So this is the Webflow project. And as you can see here, everything has been implemented. The sidebar that sticks, the uh, slider here with the logos, the Let's go to the bottom of this section and you can see that the slider sticks at the bottom. We also complete the interactions for the team and we even completed the slider and place the slider navigation right here. And of course, the easy stuff of the footer and this call to action section. And I'm going to provide this uh, website as a clone so that you can clone it uh, as a project of yours. You'll also notice there's some custom code that has a cookie. So as you can see, I also implemented this cookie section. And once you click on, I understand, if you refresh your page, there's a cookie that is implemented so that you only see that one time uh, in a 24 hour period. You can change that cookie um, to a different time period if you like, but it will be within the project if you have to use that type of feature. Alrighty, so let's jump into our Webflow project to talk about how I implemented the slider for the um, for that uh, for this section here, and how we managed to move the navigation to this section. All right, so. As you can see, it is a very fairly simple slider, um, and you'll notice that the navigation uh, is below the slider here. So how do we get it into this section here? So let's talk about the structure first. So uh, as a standard slider, the slider comes and is a position absolute. And what I did instead was made this slider position relative because when I place it into these elements, I don't want it to be position absolute any longer. So I changed it to position relative for both. I added some style to them. Um, then I created this section. And the way the section is uh, structured, 
to the left is the text. So we have a wrapper that has a uh, Flexbox style. To the left is the text. And to the right of that is the navigation wrapper. And then within that are two div blocks. And both div blocks have IDs. C dash arrow dash left dash wrapper. So it's just a uh, left left wrapper and a right wrapper. And also the slider navigation also have IDs. The left one has a C dash arrow dash left and the right one has C dash arrow dash right. So what do we do to move it from below the slider into this uh, slider navigation up here? A little jQuery is all we did. So if we check our custom code here, you'll notice that just a little bit of jQuery allowed me to move the left arrow and place it into the left wrapper, and that is this wrapper here. And all we use is the append to function, which is a really cool and very helpful. Uh, if you've signed up for my Mr. Create dot today, where I showed how to create personalized content, you'll notice that I'm also using jQuery there, where I'm using uh, functions such as append to to manipulate and move around different uh, content. So it's that. That's it. That's it. It's very simple. Very simple indeed. So right now, as you can see, all this content is an exact uh, copy of the original site besides the background and things of that nature. So in order for this to be clonable, I'm going to do a little bit more work, change uh, some of the logos. So I'm going to create a couple logos myself. Uh, I'm going to utilize some of these icon icons for the iconography and change out uh, and make one standard project image. And lastly, change out the images for the team, this item here, this image, and all of the logos. So then when you download this, you have no problems in regards to having uh, any of the assets from the previous uh, uh, website. Hopefully this was helpful and let's have a proper goodbye. Pretty cool. Just a little jQuery custom code allowed us to manipulate the slider navigation to place it in a location that better fit our design. Hopefully this was helpful. And if you have any questions, don't forget, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and hit that bell wherever it is to get notifications when we have new YouTube videos published. See y'all next week.